We're discussing the 30th anniversary of Nick at Night, coming up next in The Real Footage Show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another edition of The Real Footage Show. I'm Tim Davis, and today we are going to be celebrating the 30th anniversary of the cable TV network Nick at Night, which debuted originally on July 1st of 1985. We're going to be discussing the beginning of the network, as well as its popular success, which led into the 1990s and beyond. In 1985, after Nickelodeon would go off for the night, around the 8 or 9 p.m. hour, the powers that be in the network decided to continue programming throughout the night, but they were trying to figure out a way of what to program during those hours. While oldies were very popular on radio networks, why not have oldies popular with TV shows? Nick at Night was born. And shows such as Mr. Ed, Green Acres, My Three Sons, Dennis the Menace, The Donna Reed Show, Route 66, and classic movies began some of the most earliest lineups for the network. 1985 to 1990 was like a test for the network, trying to gain an audience, which it did, and also to attract uh, an audience that would really appreciate the shows that they were presenting. It also had a very unique way of creating bumpers for the network. Its on-air IDs advertising the network featured that of a man or a woman sitting down in front of a TV set, hitting the remote control, and something bizarre often happening. Somebody coming through the TV screen, somebody coming in through the door. Uh, those jingles, uh, network promo bumper IDs at that time were very MTV-ish. Uh, because the people that created the MTV bumpers had a lot to do with the early Nick and Knight ones as well. Going into the early 1990s, after Nick and Knight became very successful, the network continued to add more shows to its lineup, including those of the best of Saturday Night Live, Laughing, Dick Van Dyke, The Bob Newhart Show, Get Smart, F Troop, The Adventures of Superman, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, The Lucy Show, and countless, countless others. By now, Nick and Knight was extremely popular with the fans. It was a total destination for classic TV lovers everywhere, and was one of the only very few networks in the beginning to present such shows. While other networks were using reruns as fillers, Nick and Knight made it a way of life and used these shows as profit and entertainment for its viewers. Nick and Knight really enjoyed the use of promos, IDs, and bumpers for the network during its entire years on the air. Uh, who can forget such classics as The Adventures of Milkman, How to Be Swell, and classic jingles like the one seen behind me that were presented on Nick and Knight over the years. This is the creativity and uniqueness of this network that really made it different from what else was on television at the time. In the cable TV market, Nick at Night was a prime destination for classic TV lovers everywhere to enjoy shows that they grew up with or for a younger audience to see them for the first time. Me being part of the younger audience uh, that they attracted, I really found an enjoyment in seeing shows that featured such things as a talking horse or such classic heartfelt episodes of things that you see on shows like the Donna Reed Show. That's what Nick at Night uh, was uh, different from the rest and what made it uh, so, so very unique in all those different aspects of its uh, 30 years on the air. Another thing that made Nick at Night so very unique was the way it treated its shows. As other networks treated them as fillers, Nick at Night made the shows the main spotlight each and every night. When a new show would join the network, for example, Nick at Night would purposely present an entire week dedicated to that show to welcome it to the lineup. A very unique thing. Nick at Night is also one of the original creators of the marathon format, presenting block after block of a TV show one after the other. This is something that networks later on would begin doing with many of shows. Sometimes networks later on throughout the years would dedicate an entire weekend to a TV show. But Nick at Night was there in the very beginning with those special little techniques like marathon blocks. A simple formula, but oh what effective it really was. And then who can forget classics like the, the annual New Year's Countdowns with Casey Kasem, which began in the late 1980s and ran until the late 1990s on Nick at Night. The classic TV countdowns in their original days would run all through the entire day, even during the Nickelodeon's block uh, programming segments, and finish off around midnight of, of that particular day. 
and they would count down the very best shows uh, voted upon by its viewers. As the years went on, the countdowns went from a daily event to a weekly event. But they were very interesting to see what show would be crowned number one for that particular year. Another thing, too, that Nick and Knight was also famous for was the uniqueness in its uh, lineup identifications. The way it presented what's coming up next on each show, uh, presenting what times it'll be on. Over the years, the graphics and the animation on changing them, either from claymation to live action to stock footage. Nick and Knight became so successful in the early to mid-1990s that the powers that be at the network decided to launch yet another network, a spin-off off of Nick at Night. On April 29th of 1996, after years of research and work, Nick at Night's TV Land debuted, which was an, a separate channel from Nick at Night through cable and satellite providers. All you had to do was call up your local cable and satellite provider and tell them to take me to TV Land, and you would be taken to a TV channel that was dedicated to classic TV shows like Nick at Night 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. TV Land was based off of Nick at Night, but TV Land was able to give viewers more than what Nick at Night could. Since Nick at Night would only air during prime time in the overnight hours, TV Land would air every day, morning, noon, and night, and would present a wide variety of television shows that Nick at Night never really got a chance to touch. A lot in the variety aspects, uh, and as well as uh, TV westerns and dramas, hour-long show formats, and many others. TV Land was a success as well, spinning off from Nick at Night. Both a very unique blend of classic television entertainment at its very best. The mid-1990s for Nick at Night also seen a unique line of merchandise start to come out to the public, like the Nick at Night magazine, and Nick at Night Records. CDs and cassettes were released in the mid-1990s based on television shows from the network. Most popular ones from that collection, which everyone mostly remembers, would be that of the Dick Van Dyke Dance Party CD and the Donna Reed's Dinner Party CD. Both were e extremely successful based on the shows from Nick at Night. Other sets along the years featured ones from Happy Days and other mood-setting CDs with popular songs from the 50s and 60s, or whatever genre uh, the CD was themed for. Uh, Nick at Night also, uh, in the late 1990s, began a new campaign uh, where it was titled The Place for TV Hits, beginning around 1997 and 1998. Its on-air programming uh, began to also reflect that change. A little bit more modern programming began to enter the network now. During the late 1990s, shows like The Odd Couple, Happy Days, The Wonder Years, Rhoda, among many, uh, began airing on the network. So Nick at Night changed their on-air imagery to reflect on that new look. The place for TV hits was now uh, the new image for Nick at Night compared to the past with that being of uh, Hello Out There from TV Land. When TV Land debuted, Nick at Night dropped a lot of its Hello Out There from TV Land campaigns because they didn't want its viewers to uh, misinterpret both of the networks, being that TV Land was used in many of the Nick at Night jingles uh, from the early 1990s and a lot of the promotional spots. They dropped entirely almost all of them that featured those in it, and only a handful of these classic jingles like these were left until they were entirely all taken off at some time in late 1998 and 1999. Nick at Night in the late 1980s and 1990s featured Dixie the Flying Pixie as the network's mascot, but in the late 1990s, this new Nick at Night mascot became king of network promotional spots and IDs. By the early to mid-2000s, Nick at Night yet again changed its programming direction, uh, changing its on-air imagery to reflect that of the times of the early 2000s. The AT and the Nick at Night logo for at was changed to a stylized at symbol, which could be found that on a uh, computer keyboard. The network's now blue logo was shown on screen with the slogan as 100% sitcoms, 100% unreality. Shows like Three's Company, All in the Family, The Cosby Show, Roseanne began entering the network's lineup now. And the focus was now more on shows such as that. For years, Nick at Night also featured during the summer months, Block Party Summer, where each night of the week was dedicated to a particular show during the summer months. Uh, this continued in the 2000s, but was now known as Nick at Night Summer Camp. 
instead of one show being featured tonight, now two shows, one during the primetime hours and the other during the overnight hours. Nick at Night again changed uh, in the mid-2000s up into the late 2000s when Nickelodeon now took over the full run of Nick at Night. Before, the networks were through the same uh, company, but they were operating at different parts of the day, so they were known as two separate networks on one channel. Nickelodeon now was overseeing the complete structure of Nickelodeon and now began to change its logo and redesign again. The popular orange uh, Nickelodeon logo, which was seen for years now, transferred over into the Nick at Night area. Nick at Night's logo was now tinted orange to reflect that of the Nickelodeon takeover or change. And more shows of the modern uh, day programming from the 1980s and 1990s, like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Full House, now began entering the network. Nick at Night in the late 2000s and early 2010s continued to delight its audiences with modern day programming like Everybody Loves Raymond, Full House, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Nanny, and many others. But nothing will ever compare to the genuine good old days of Nick at Night in the 1980s and the 1990s when the network was a true destination for oldies classic TV lovers everywhere. Nick at Night over the years has also acknowledged its anniversary numbers. For example, in 1990, when the network was turning five years old, they presented a special event on air for its bumpers, jingles, and IDs. In 1995, now turning 10 years old, Nick at Night presented a special week-long marathon event of best episodes of shows that the network began airing to the current date. 1995 was also the year that the network issued the Nick at Night magazine, as well as the CD and collection line known as Nick at Night Records. In 2000, the network turned 15 years old, and the writers salute classics, uh, legendary producers and creators of your favorite shows like Gary Marshall, Carl Reiner, Norman Lear, and Sherwood Schwartz were on hand to present their favorites. In 2005, the network celebrated its 20th year on the air and uh, to celebrate the 20th year in 2005 they presented the original ABC lineup from 85 featuring shows like Growing Pains and Who's the Boss as well as Moonlighting to celebrate what was airing on the networks at the time when Nick at Night launched. In 2010 Nick at Night turned 25 years old but for some reason the network did not acknowledge its 25th anniversary on air either by special events or its logo I, however, did present a week-long special event with videos and pictures on my Facebook page in 2010 to, to celebrate the uh, network's uh, 25th year on the air. Now, in 2015, we will see if a 30th anniversary uh, celebration will be featured on our air. If not, let's just say that this video uh, celebrates its 30th year on the air. Happy 30 years. In concluding our 30th anniversary tribute to the cable TV network Nick at Night in this very special and rare video, not many people nowadays care about such things, uh, but I do, and that's why this video was created. Uh, but uh, 30 years is quite a magnificent number, and to sit back and reflect upon its glory days and what it has become is truly special, I believe. I just wish more people could see things like that, but unfortunately they don't. But uh, Nick at Night was definitely an influence in my life. It uh, was number one for me and still is, uh, getting me to like such television shows, the classics. It really uh, brought me to where I am today. And if it wasn't for the network, my Facebook pages and, and whatnot would not be what they are either. Because it was all fueled from this very network. I was introduced to these shows at a very young age. And the rest is history, as they say. But 30 years, happy 30 years to Nick at Night. Uh, you've made many people happy over the years and really introduced a whole new younger audience to classic shows that could have been forever on shelves somewhere. But Nick at Night decided to take the chance, make a network out of them, and now you see networks everywhere. Mostly every time you turn around, there's another new retro channel coming about doing the same thing that Nick at Night once did. Nick at Night uh, is definitely an influence to many, and it also uh, highlighted some of the best uh, marathon events, programming stunts, things, everything you can imagine uh, with programming it has done over the years. A few more tidbits to celebrate its 30th anniversary. Uh, Dick Van Dyke was the network's chairman in the 
mid 1990s. The network also uh, featured movies throughout the 1980s and into the early 1990s. Um, uh, classics from uh, many years have gone by. The network also uh, featured some incredible uh, talent. Uh, they would bring on-air talent on to promote shows. Uh, for example, they did this uh, for the Partridge Family and uh, for the Patty Duke Show. And their, their programming stunts in general were just uh, totally magnificent. And then there is uh, the original programming. Uh, while many people don't remember it, uh, Nick and I actually began some original programming back in the early 1990s with shows like On the Television, which was sort of a critic-style TV show where two uh, people would talk about uh, television movies and parodies and whatnot. And the TV show Hi Honey, I'm Home, which was airing on another network at the time, but was also re-airing on Nick at Night, was another original concept. Uh, small things like this is what made this network stand apart from many of the others. It was one of the most popular networks on cable TV back at that time, and we all could see why. It really, they really did their homework there uh, with its promotions and its shows, and and really created a name for itself. So to you, Nick at Night, and for everyone who stands behind it, happy 30 years. Uh, you've been magnificent. Uh, since the day you first began in 1985, thank you for the influence, uh, thank you for the, the spontaneity and uniqueness that made you different from everybody else. Happy 30th, Nick and I. And for next time, thank you for watching. I'm Tim Davis. We'll see you next time.